Good morning. I hope that you're having a great Advent season. We're here today in the third Sunday of Advent to talk about the light of Christ. We've been talking about going from darkness to light throughout this series and how that changes perspective, uh, both from a theological standpoint and from a reality standpoint. And so today we're going to continue that. And we're going to read a very familiar passage of Scripture, and I want to caution you, when you read passages of Scripture that, that you know well, and you know this well because it's the story of the season, right? This fits where we're at today, moving toward Christmas and toward the coming of Christ. But be careful that when you're reading a, f a familiar passage that you don't just read it and say, oh yeah, I know that. There's intricacies and things we need to pick up on, and we're going to do that today. We're in Luke chapter 1. Begin with verse 26. It says, In the sixth month, of, sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, remember Elizabeth was John the Baptist's mother we talked about last week, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You were conceiving at birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word, be to me, be, your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And that last phrase is what we're going to key in on today. May your word to me be fulfilled fulfilled. Now, here's Mary, this little teenage Jewish girl going through something she can't even possibly conceive of, can't even imagine what's about to happen. She even asked, how can this be? Because uh, physi physiologically and biologically, this is not possible. But she says, may it be to me as you've said. Here's the thing. We don't always know, right? And, and the question I, I put, pose to you today is, do we believe what we say we believe? Because life will challenge that. We say we believe in a living God. We say we believe in the resurrected Christ. We say we believe in a God who heals, a God who delivers, a God who can raise the dead. We say we believe in a God who does miracles. We say we believe in a God who will lead and guide us. And yet we walk through this life sometimes doubting all of that. How do I know when God speaks to me if I can, if I can believe it? How do I follow that word from God uh, when it really doesn't look like it should work? What do I do when, when he tells me to wait? What do I do when he tells me? And, and Mary's going through that same thing. This doesn't seem possible. But God, if this is what you want, let it be whatever you want it to be. She trusts that God knows what he's doing. And I wonder what it would be like for us if we really did trust God to know what he's doing. How many mistakes and bad decisions that we make thinking we can fix it ourselves would we change? How many times would we move in a direction that's better than the ones we've moved in because we thought we had to be the ones to take care of it? When the whole time God was saying, trust me, trust me, believe me, listen to my word. And it's in those times of trouble, those times of stress, those times of whatever we're going through that we need more than ever to hear the word of God, to hear it when we've not heard it in a while. God, am I in the right, going in the right direction? Am I going the right way? Years ago, we were hiking in the, in the lower Rocky Mountains, and uh, we had one person in charge of the map and the, all the stuff where we were going, and we would walk for quite a ways sometimes, and every now and then someone would ask, are you sure we're going the right way? And you really didn't need to check it that often because once you got on the trail, you kind of knew where it was going. But the question was still, we've been walking a long time, and nobody's really said anything. Is this the right way? Well, sometimes we go through life and we don't hear a word from God or a direction from God, and we have to think back to the last thing He told us. And are we being faithful to the last thing He told us, even if it takes a while, even if it's been a while since we've heard a word? But if we're concerned, we need to dig in and press in and listen once again for that word. But the question still comes back, do we believe 
what we say we believe. Am I going to trust that word? You know, the hardest word God's given me uh, throughout my life, but a lot lately for some reason, is just be quiet. Just be quiet and wait. Be quiet and wait on me. See, I'm a talker. That's kind of what I do. It's, it's my profession, but it's also my, my tendency. I like to talk my way out of things. I like to talk and think through things. I actually process out loud. That's my system. And when God says, Scott, it's time to be quiet, that's a tough one for me sometimes. But because there's times I say, but God, I could fix that. God, I could speak to that. God, I could change. And the reality of what God's trying to tell me is, no, you really couldn't because all your talking's not helping the situation. All your talking's not making a difference. All your talking is not changing anything because it's already broken on the other side. So be quiet and let me handle this. That's tough for me. But if he's who he says he is, and I believe him to be who he is, then I'm going to trust that he knows what he's talking about. And I'm going to keep my big mouth shut and let him deal with stuff that needs to be dealt with and let him bring me into places that I need to be brought into. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now how can we be sure of what we don't see? Well, I don't know if we're sure of what we don't see as much as we're sure that God's going to bring about what God's going to bring about, that God's going to do what God's going to do, and we can trust that. And there's times that the church needs to come back to this faith, this faith that comes through Emmanuel, God with us. He brings this hope and this faith back into our world because of his birth. He says God fulfills the plan he had all along. God's fulfilling the thing he told us he would do from the very beginning of time when we mess things up with sin. And it's wonderful. And God is trustworthy and trustful. And so we can put our trust in him. But we have to be able to believe what we say we believe. And Christian, I'm not sure we do that much anymore. Because we like to fix stuff. And we're not really sure we've seen God do a, a, a bona fide miracle in a while. We're not sure we've seen God break through in a while. Well, I can tell you, I've seen him do it over and over and over. And I know others who would say the same thing. But you got to be looking for it, and you got to be watching for it, and you got to be trusting for it, right? We're waiting for that, that light to come so that we can walk in the understandings of, of his stuff instead of the things of this world, which is what we call the darkness. Jesus said in John 8, I am the light of the world. Follow me and you'll never walk in darkness. Now that's a key phrase. Follow me. Stay with me, watch me, listen to me, do what I do, and you'll never walk in darkness. Again, like we said last week, that doesn't mean you won't have troubles. That doesn't mean you won't have conflicts. That doesn't mean you won't go through some bad patches. But follow him and you'll always know where you're going. Follow him and you'll always know kind of how to get through it. Follow him even when the trail gets long, even when he hasn't said anything in a while, even when it seems like an eternity since he's told you to, to something to do, just do the last thing he told you. If he says be quiet, be quiet until he says speak. If he tells you to stop, stop until he says walk. If he tells you to walk, keep walking until he says rest. Whatever it is, we, 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 in order to hear him and see this light, we have to follow him. John 8, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light. I am the light. And he's the only one we're going to find that in. And it's imperative, Christian, in order to believe what we say we believe, we have to study it, and we have to see it, and we have to witness it, we have to be around it, and we have to surround ourselves with it. And that means spending time with him, and that means spending time in his word, and that means following him in whatever way that means for you. That means going after him and trusting that he's going to do this work. If we're going to see, go from darkness to light, if we're going to see what it is to walk in the full perspective of the things he wants for us. We have to listen and believe that he knows what he's doing. I believe when God told me to be quiet, it was the word I needed to hear. And I'm doing my very best in the situations and circumstances where he's telling me to be quiet. Because listen, we deal with all kinds of different people in life, and family, and church, and jobs, and everything. And sometimes he's doing things on our behalf that we don't even know about. So I trust if he tells me to be quiet, to be quiet. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's tempting. It's tempting to jump in there and 
use my words and try to fix it or put my perspective on it or put my two cents in. But I find that every time I, I, I want to do that, he shows me just how badly that will go, how ineffective that will be. Be quiet. Trust me, Scott. I'm going to do that. I don't know how long that's going to last, but I'm going to keep doing that. What's he telling you? Where is he telling you to follow him? Where is he telling you to be faithful? Where is he telling you to trust him? Where is he telling you to believe what you don't yet see? That's a tough place, but it's a good place. And it's a place we're going to find life and we're going to find light. As we move just a little bit closer to that miraculous moment where Christ is born and we're getting there, this light that's coming into the world that we, that we know about but that we're, the story's leading to, it's going to change everything. All of a sudden, things that were not possible are possible. Death can't be conquered. Well, now it can because Christ came into the world, right? Sin can't be overcome. Well, now it can because Christ came into the world. Miracles don't happen. Well, now they do because Christ is performing miracles. All of these things come because Christ came into the world. And when he came into your life, he brought the same stuff. Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe he's who he says he is. I believe he's who this word says he is. And it's so many times when I trust that. Now, I will confess, there are times I don't. There are times I jump out on my own. There are times I think, well, God, surely you don't understand. And I've gone and made the mistakes just like the rest of us. But I can tell you the times that I have trusted him, he's been faithful every single time. And I invite you to find that trust in him today. Walk out of the darkness into the light and let him show you what he's got. Follow him. He says, and you'll never walk in darkness. We're almost there. We're almost at, 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 the, at the peak and the, the, the culmination of Advent when Christ is born. I pray that you'll join us next week and even Christmas Eve as we, as we celebrate this great, great light coming into the world in this great moment. But for you as a Christian, it's already there. Believe in it. Watch what happens. Let me pray for you. Father, you have brought light to us and you've said to follow you and we'll never walk in darkness. And Father, it's so hard sometimes for us to do that because we want to trust our ways rather than your ways. Help us to stop and be quiet and listen and be still and hear that word come to us. And help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus, to believe your word and believe that you are who you say you are. We thank you for the light you've brought to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stay with us. We're almost there.